Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be talking to you about static friction. So you have the equation from your textbook or your note packet that says the force of static friction is less than or equal to mu s times f sub n. So mu s is the coefficient of static friction and f sub n is the normal force. And so that less than or equal to can be a little bit tricky. And so I just want to take a moment to explain that a little bit. I've got a homemade spring scale here. Since we're on quarantine, I don't have access to our spring scales from community college. So I made my own with some rubber bands. And we're going to be looking at this cup here. I have some coins in there. And we're going to look at the, the force of friction acting on that cup. And so let me get this set up here. I'm going to zoom you in here. So you can see. And there's a scale here. And this is calibrated in terms of weights of pennies and so it's sort of a strange force scale it's not pounds or newtons but all that matters is the relative size of these as far as this discussion goes all right so i'm going to pull and you can see the cup's not accelerating and so that means that the acceleration of the cup is zero which means the forces are balanced so the tension here which is what's registering on the force scale is five, and again, don't worry about the units for now. It's a force of five. That means the static friction is also five. But that doesn't mean that's equal to the maximum static friction. Okay, static friction is a self-adjusting force. So if I pull with 10, okay, a force of 10, static friction is now exerting a force that way of 10. And if I apply a tension of 15, looking closely, trying to see that scale, then static friction is 15. And I can just keep doing that and keep doing that. And static friction just keeps adjusting until it can't anymore. And so that time when it can't adjust anymore, oh, there it goes. So it's somewhere, it's hard to see on this screen, but it looks like it's somewhere between 15 and 20 is the maximum static friction. But that doesn't mean there's always the maximum amount of static friction. Okay, and so right there you can see the, the friction is, well, you can see the tension is less and the static friction is less also. And the same thing applies for something on an incline. And so if you have something like this cup on an incline, the same thing is true. Like if I told you what the coefficient of static friction is and I told you what the normal force was or you calculated the normal force, if you multiply the coefficient of static friction by the normal force, you'll find the max static friction. But that doesn't mean that's how much friction is acting right now, because look, I can tilt it further. I can tilt it further. So as I tilt it, the maximum, the maximum amount of static friction is not changing, but the actual amount of friction is changing at all these different levels. Until you get to the part where it slides, and then you've got kinetic friction. All right, I hope that helps you understand the less than or equal to in that equation.